All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the best damn podcast there ever was. It's been a long time, but we're back, uh, and we're doing some different stuff now. But just to reintroduce ourselves, I'm Cody, and I'm Bryce, and we're doing a WWE Payback 2016 predictions podcast, which we've never done before. We've never done predictions before, and um, how this is going to work is we're going to have uh, prediction podcasts for every pay per view throughout the year and network events if they announce enough matches beforehand for those because sometimes they only ma- announce like one or two matches um, and whoever gets the most matches right at the end of the year um, will get some kind of award at the end of the year we haven't decided what it'll be and whoever is ahead after each pay-per-view um, will get a title belt that I've made up that I'm going to show off in just a second um, and whoever does worse at each pay-per-view has to do a punishment after the pay-per-view and we've agreed that after payback whoever does worse has to take three full-fledged chops from the other person right across the chest like big show level type yeah and this is also the first time we're doing a video podcast so hey everybody um but i'll go grab the title So it's a little cheap, but I didn't want to spend like fifty dollars on a, a like good title belt or four hundred and fifty dollars for a replica title belt uh, off WWE Shop. But this is what we're working with. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be it'd be so, it's something to work with. It's the shape of the WWE World Heavyweight yeah. Title. So, so uh, as close as you could get to that with cardboard. Yeah, it's a little big. I made it too big to start, and then I cut it down, and it's still a little bit too big. But I was like, eh, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm not going to cut it down again. I'm going to feel like Charlotte with that WWE Women's title because <laughs> it's too big on her. Yeah. But, yeah, so whoever uh, does better on the predictions uh, on this podcast will be presented this on the uh, review podcast, which we will be doing um, after payback um, t- at some point. It should be up in a couple days, right. probably maximum. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the predictions. Um, let's start with the pre-show match, Ryback versus Kalisto, and we're going to alternate who does their prediction first, and then we'll kind of give a little bit of an explanation why. Um, this is like the one match on the card that I'm not sure about, just because they they haven't uh, had any build-up to this match, so there's no way for me to see which way they're going with this match. I'm going to go with Ryback on this match, Ryback versus Kalisto, um, because... It, I love Kalista with the championship, and if they if they book him right, that then they could do a really good job uh, with Kalisto as champion. But they haven't been booking him into any storylines right now because I think because he's part of the Lucha Dragons maybe. Um, but I'll get to you in a second. I'm just kind of explaining my reasoning behind this. If they have Ryback with the title, I don't want Ryback with the title. But they can actually start putting the United States title in storylines then. So. I mean, like, this feud hasn't gotten any build-up, right? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen them on TV since WrestleMania before. Yeah. Like, then again, I have been a little pick-and-choosy with my viewing. Um, but, uh, quick question. In title matches, the winner, if it's a winner by disqualification or count-up, but the title doesn't change hands, mm-hmm. does that mean, like, it's a no-go? Then Should we just disregard that result, or... Should we, like, if I, I if, think... Ry- if Ryback wins by disqualification, but I say Callisto wins, which I do, um, by disqualification, count out, whatever, do you still win? Or since Callisto kept the title, do I win? Uh, for the title matches, because I think this will come into play in the main event as well, I think we should predict who's going to walk out with the title. Right. And I think Ryback's going to walk out with the title. It's Callisto for me. I feel like... There's that Cinderella story aspect to how he had the title, but they really haven't cashed in on that. So, um, I f- well, if you want to make the title relevant and put it in storylines, you don't put it on Ryback. I know Vince has this huge hard on for big strong types. But no, Ryback just he's not he doesn't have that allure to him anymore. I haven't really been excited about a Ryback thing since Survivor Series two years ago, year and a half ago, but. Uh, yeah, it's Callisto for me. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, I could I could see that match going either way. I just think they're gonna take the title off Kalisto because they're not really doing anything with it right now. Have, have, um, have the Lucha Dragons done anything? Either I haven't seen that. They weren't. Uh, the they were. Tournament. They were in the tag tournament. Yeah. They were in the first round and they lost to the Dudleys. Oh, yeah. And then I think so Kalisto right. might have had a little yeah. bit of a shoulder injury. That's probably why. Yeah, and it, and if that's a lingering injury, I haven't read anything about that, but if that's a lingering injury, that would be another reason to take the title off of him. Mm, probably. Um, I would have just stripped it. Like, for some reason, they they pick and choose, WWE picks and chooses, like, let's just strip a guy directly if he's injured, but let's put him out for one match, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the fucking logic behind that? Because if a guy goes out and gets hurt and gets paralyzed, he's you know, like liable to sue you, mm-hmm. you know, on your watch. So, it's it's whatever. I don't really care. All right, and then we got Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. I'm gonna. Well, you should go first because I went first on the last one, but I think we're both gonna go the same way on this one. I honestly feel like Ziggler is gonna score an upset because if they go if with an undefeated streak again for. Uh, Corbin, it's just going to be a replay of NXT, and that's not going to get him over. Like you want to get a, a vicious heel over, attack people every time he loses, attack people every time he wins. You know, just make him be an all-around ass. Kind of like Kevin Owens when he loses. Sure. Although Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen, I like to call him Steen still because I'm an I'm an indie mark. So. Um, but no, Baron Corbin comes off much more of an asshole than Steen does. So, well, I'm. You surprised me with that. I thought we were both gonna go the same way for sure on this one, but I'm going with Baron Corbin, uh, just because they've been booking him so strong. He's undefeated so far, and I feel like if Ziggler wins this match, He's been on the it. Main roster less than a month. Well, yeah, but he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at Mania in his debut. Okay, since when has that helped anybody's career? check Cesaro for, you know, history. Well, still, that was Corbin's debut. Right, 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 right. But And if they handle him correctly, then I'll rethink my opinion on the matter. But the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal isn't something you can go on when it comes to this guy has a career launched, you know, right off the bat, just like that. But I, I feel like they're, they can get one more match because I feel like Ziggler is that sacrificial lamb and... People work with him once they come back from the injured list, or they come up, come up with him, and then they work him when they make their main roster debut, like Breeze, uh, to get the feel of the main roster. But I'm a Ziggler mark too, so I feel like this match could go his way and leading to another match at Extreme Rules. That Baron wins just like that, because it's Extreme Rules most likely. Yeah. So. I think Baron wins this match. He moves on to something different. Uh, I feel like if Ziggler wins this, it kind of kills his momentum, unless, unless, like what you said, he just attacks Ziggler after the match. But I kind of don't feel like seeing this story go on any longer. I want I want them both to kind of move on to something new, rather than Ziggler just job out to get Corbin over. Because I... I'm kind of sick of seeing Ziggler job out to people. <laughs> you and me both. Like, when they squandered his momentum after Survivor Series that one year, I could talk about Survivor Series all day because it was just a, a shitload of missed opportunities in the aftermath. Um, he totally should have won the Rumble, and they should have put the title on Rollins at that Rumble, too, and it would have been Ziggler, Rollins at uh, WrestleMania, and then... Some, then after that, the authority comes down, kicks Ziggler's ass, Rollins catches in his money in the bank. Mm-hmm. That would have been cool. That's never been done before. Book me. Right. Yeah. We've said it before, I think we should both be on WWE we Creative. We, we have better ideas than those stupid-ass idiots who, they write for a TV show. Put them in Lucha Underground. That's a TV show. Don't put them for WWE, which is a wrestling program that Vince likes to you know, play off as, oh, it's sports entertainment, sure. No. Mm-hmm. Okay, one, when it's not wrestling, it's not really entertaining anymore. It's just, it's forced. The comedy is just, bleh. Yeah. It's it's suitable for a five-year-old, but not a 19. Are you 20 now, or are you still 19? I'm still 19 until late two August. Ni- so two 19-year-olds. It's not good anymore. All right, on to the next match. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. This one I'm a little, I'm a little tied up about, but I think I think I got this one right. I'm going to go with Sami Zayn on this one um, because for a while I thought Kevin Owens was going to win this, 
but then I thought about it a lot today mm. and when we were uh, before we got together for this podcast and I thought well they're gonna have Sami Zayn win this just to keep the rivalry going he'll win on like a roll up or something I think and then Owens is gonna just attack him after the match and then that's how they're gonna keep the feud going because these two are gonna feud forever <laughs> And yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm totally... Well, they have been feuding forever as it is. Like, I don't know if you followed Ring of Honor at all. I didn't really follow it, but I've seen some stuff that they did in Ring of Honor. Well, yeah, because they did, like, that one video package. Um, but I... That's how I got into Ring of Honor, was these two guys feuding. And it was it was incredible. And they did... They stretched that whole thing out to a year. Mm-hmm. It was at Final Battle, which is Ring of Honor's WrestleMania, 2009... And it ended with Steen putting his career on the line, Ring of Honor career at that, um, at Final Battle 2010. They stretched that whole thing out for a year. Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. Like a feud between two guys. They they added in a few people here and there, uh, but it was those two just going at each other's throats for over a year, or for just a year. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, they have been feuding in other companies too, like Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Like, they, uh, they're they pretty popular over there, too. Um, but these two, like, I'm surprised. I would have held off on this feud. I would not have rushed to it right as both of them get on the main roster. Because they just did this in NXT less than a year ago, or just a year ago. And, you know, if they're destined to do this forever, do you want to milk it dry immediately, just like that, you know? And mm-hmm. at least get a little spark back because I don't know. none of them like none of them walked away in WrestleMania with the title and which was purely for shock value by the way and you know like the dynamic between them is incredible don't get me wrong it doesn't need a title however it would have been much more interesting because Kevin Steen has such a high opinion of himself I'm talking like the character Kevin Steen I don't know him as a man I can't speak for him as a man I would love to meet the man, though. I've seen him in interviews. I think he'd be cool to hang out with. He would be cool, because he's Kevin fucking Steen. Um, but, however, like, he's he's got that like that prize fighter mm-hmm. kind of attitude. Like, I, I'm here to fight, for, you know, for the big prize and whatever. I feel like it would be really cool if Zayn took the title off of him, because it would just unleash this huge frenzy. If you thought Ambrose unleashed a, an animal in Kevin Steen... This guy, Sami Zayn, you know. Yeah. So, what's your prediction on this one? I don't think you said. Steen. Steen, kill, Steen, kill. So, we've gone this opposite direction on all three matches so far. So far, yeah. Like, I, I did not see this happening. I didn't see it. Oh, I, I could have just because, you know. You and I have differing opinions on most of this shit, but then we could just we could connect on most. Just as simple as that. But it's like it's half and half with us. We disagree on half. We agree with half. So. I feel like we have the same opinion on a lot of a, a lot of the wrestlers and right. their gimmicks. Right. But when it comes to who's going to win the matches, maybe we're going to differ more than I thought we would because we've never done predictions like this before. Well, this match was it was pretty difficult for me to choose a winner because I like both of them, you know, and. I was telling you before, if you guys listen to the Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show on YouTube, uh, sub- subscribe to TV Tracks. It's pretty fun. I listen to Solid Monster mostly. But Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle, they talk about most of the shit. Not so much we, because they don't follow pay-per-views directly. They talk about like the big results and shit. Um, Kevin Castle called Sami Zayn a more boring version of Daniel Bryan, which kind of made me cringe. Because I thought that was just a fucking stupid-ass remark. By a Roman Reigns fan, nonetheless. And one, he's not, he's kind of more interesting than Brian a, in, in a little bit because, well, one, it was the same thing with Daniel Bryan. He was always knocked down a peg or two and then he was trying to fight to get that step higher. But that doesn't say, I, I, I like Brian, don't get me wrong. Um, but. Sami Zayn is not a boring version of Daniel Bryan, and it was a, it was really difficult to, coming to that conclusion. But I like Kevin Steen a shitload more than I do Sami Zayn. So, all right, uh, 
Chris Jericho versus Dean Ambrose. Dean's got to win this. Dean has got to win. Dean, I well, both of them need a win, but I feel like Jericho is there to put guys over now. He's been here on and off for 15 years. There was like two years he was gone. Um, the only reason that I question if Dean's going to win this is because Jericho beat Styles at Mania, which should not have happened. I, You know, it's actually, it made sense to me. I don't know if the judgment could, can pass on you, but not all your favorite people can go over. You got to hate, like, the heels, especially if Jericho is a heel. He's a heel, you got to hate him. What better way to heal a guy than to kill your indie favorite, you know? Like, just because... Just because you get a new puppy doesn't mean you neglect your 10-year-old dog. Just because he's older and you've had him for 10 years, you know, like or in this case 15. But Jericho needs a win too. If he puts guys over 100% of the time, it's not going to matter when he puts over the next guy. He's got to get a win here and there. And the next night, AJ pinned him regardless. And he's in the main event. Who do you think really won? I, I, I kind of see what you're saying, right. but I, we're both in agreement here, Dean. Dean, Dean. Yeah, he, they're they're making him into the the top baby face in the company, I think. I, and then he's he's gonna end up fighting for the title at some point when Rollins comes back, I think, and maybe a shield triple threat. I don't know. I'm honestly thinking that at SummerSlam, it would be cool to see that happen. I I, I feel like they should have saved that for another year, maybe. Like, WrestleMania 2017, I think that's 33, yeah. Um, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Shield Triple Threat, Clash of the Titans. That's the main event right there. I've I've also been been thinking um, the big um, summer angle this summer um, could be the Shield getting back together to um, fight against the New Day. I was thinking you were going to say a completely different group there. What, what were you thinking I was going to say? Wyatt's? No, not the Wyatt's. That, that's been done before, but I would like to see more of that because they didn't quite go on that full potential they had there. Um, it's Okay, it's not, you know, deep, hidden, you know, that uh, the Bullet Club, most of them, have come to the WWE. Oh, yeah, that that sounds way better than what I was thinking. No, I, I I would actually like to see the Shield versus the New Day, because just I like hearing Biggie say "booty," mm-hmm. the, the the way he says it, you know, and um, I, that that would that would sell SummerSlam. New Day versus Shield. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that that would be an interesting match. They got to take the title off Roman, of course. Mm-hmm. Tonight, tonight, um, but the Shield versus the New Day would be really fucking cool to see. Just to see what they could do, you know, because like, you got to turn the new day back to bad guys, though, which I, I don't mind. They they could work better as that, but um, plus they haven't really done anything worthwhile. There was that throwaway thing at WrestleMania. They're not even on the card tonight, so it uh, it could go either way. Yeah, I don't. I'm sure the New Day will be at ringside for the finals, so that tournament. Sure, but um, you, like I say, they should hold off on the Shield Triple Threat main event. They should also hold off on a reunion for the time being. Well, if they if they put the reunion together, not only could they sell SummerSlam against either the Bullet Club or the New Day, uh, whoever they decide to put them up against, that would sell SummerSlam just the Shield being back together. Sure. Um, but then after that, they could break up the Shield again. And then that could set up a triple threat for Mania. That's a good way to set that up. I, I guess. But then again, on a different side note here, I don't think WWE should ever create the Bullet Club. Or Bullet Club. It's not the Bullet Club. Um, it is a New Japan idea. I don't care if they pay for the rights. Come up with your own fucking idea. There's a rumor. Um, like I said, I listen to different podcasts. There's a rumor for the main event. I will get to that, but it's an alternative kind of twist to the Bullet Club angle. And by the way, it should definitely not be called the Balor Club either. Like, who? why would... Well, the thing is, is like, it's made up of all these different people. They're all, they're all the main event because they're all big players. That's how things were in New Japan. These guys were big threats to the world title or potential. Um... 
it wasn't named after one guy. Sure, that guy, Balor, Prince, Devitt, whatever, he led the thing, but it's not, it wasn't his group. It was their group. It was a collective, almost. So don't name it after him. Just do something original. Not bulletproof, either. Because that's a rumored name yeah. for it. All right, on to the next match. Uh, Enzo and Cass versus the Vaude Villains. Um, the last one was technically supposed to be the one that you were supposed to go first on, but we were both in agreement, so I'll go first on this one. I don't care. Um, I'm going to go with the Vaude Villains on this one, just because I'd love to see Enzo and Cass win this, but for one, I think they're uh, that the Dullies are going to come screw them over somehow, mm -hmm. and then that'll mm -hmm. set up a feud for, I think... Extreme Rules is the next podcast. Uh, not ne not the next podcast. Next pay per view. Um, well, it's the next. Podcast but too. also, if you have Enzo and Cass versus the New Day, that's two face teams going up against each other. Right. Who do you root for? You can root for everybody. Yeah. There's no, there's no rule that says you can root for everybody. WWE won't won't want two face teams going up against each other. So that's why I'm saying the Vaude Villains. I don't yes. want the Vaude Villains to I, I, be fighting for the titles yet because I'm not a big Vaude Villains fan. But that's what I see happening. And I also see them winning the titles, but I also don't want that happening either because I like the New Day. But yeah, I I see the um, the Vaude villains winning too, so we're in agreement to that. Um, I feel like it would be too early for Enzo and Cass to do anything with the tag titles, especially with the New Day. Not on your logic, but um, so just a little too early for them. However, with heels, you can be hot shot into anything just like that. I do that a lot. I don't know. Um, but, and you know, people were saying because of all this new talent coming to the main roster that the VOD villains were going to be like the, the one left out. And I was thinking, like, with teams like Enzo and Cass, because it's obvious they have, they have to have a, t a tag title run. So, and if they don't, it's going to be a big fucking waste opportunity. The VOD villains are a perfect team for them to feud with. Especially if they're bad guys, which they've kind of been going back and forth, and um, that whole when they won the the NXT title belts um, at Brooklyn, it was it was cool to see that, but I kind of feel like they didn't really do anything after, which was kind of sucky to see because they had potential. However. You know, a lot of people say that they're not going, they're going to flounder on the main roster, just so so to speak. Um, but I feel like everybody can get over if it means to get this person over. So if, you know, the Vaude Villains win, I guarantee you it is going to be to put Enzo and Cass over later on in the year. So that's my two cents on the matter. All right. Um, the next match is. The WWE Women's Championship match, it feels good to say that, instead of the Divas Championship. Um, and Natalia and apparently Bret Hart's going to be at ringside, versus Charlotte with apparently Ric Flair's supposed to be at ringside, but I've heard things that he might not be after what's been happening. But your prediction and your logic behind it, and maybe your thoughts on Flair and Bret Hart. Um, well, I, okay, well first off, I guarantee you if... Flair is not going to be there. Bret Hart's not going to be there. Because, well, you mentioned the airport incident. I heard, uh, I don't know the full details to that. I know he had an incident at the airport. I do know that Ric Flair told Natty to kill herself. Not in a, it was a Ric Flair kind of frenzied promo type thing. So it wasn't, you know, serious. Like, you should kill yourself. Nobody likes you. Whatever, um, so like you you can't have one without another. So it's it's either both or nothing. That being said, I feel like this is a tricky match because I like I like Natalia. I think she's fucking gorgeous. I don't know why people don't think she's gorgeous. Um, apart from the neck injury, I kind of wish I could be Tyson Kidd. No, just saying. Um, I gotta say Charlotte on this though. I, I she you can't put a new belt on someone and then change it immediately. Give her although technically it's the same title, just kinda rebranded and shit like that. But 
uh, I say she could probably go another six months, maybe. Be the first year-long Divas champion. Mm-hmm. God, are we that close to the year mark for her already? Uh, no. It's well, been about six months, I think, because she won it at Night of Champions. That's in September. Okay. It's eight. It's April. It's it. It's May. It's May. It's eight months. Seven and a half, to say the least. No. September. October. No, you're right. It's been seven seven months. Okay, February, March, April, yeah. So, yeah, seven months. So five more months. Another six months, and she's going to be at a year. Longest reigning women's champion since Trish Stratus. I'm also going to go with Charlotte on this one. Uh, I don't see Natalia winning this. Uh, I I kind of don't understand how she even got a title match. She just kind of said, she, "I want a title she, match." Yeah, she kind of just said, "I want a title match," and she was given a title match. No number one contender match or anything. She didn't earn it. She didn't win matches to get it. Well, the thing, the thing I don't like is that they have squandered a lot of opportunities with the women wrestlers. I don't feel they're like, doing a lot better with it now than they did with the when they had like the three separate teams. Sure. And I loved how you were so excited for the Divas Revolution. I knew they were going to blow that fucking opportunity. Sky high. Um, just just because you put three teams together and you make them tag against each other every fucking week, every fucking show, it doesn't make things interesting any any more than they already were. One, the title wasn't being defended. Which was a blatant excuse for Vince to say we can break AJ's title reign just like that. And um, Natalia too. I feel like she should have been... She is the Divas Division's undertaker. She's been there for years. She gets featured every now and then. You know, and the thing... The, okay, the thing about the Divas... The one match on the card is their main event. There's no mid card. There's no lower card. I mean, there's a pre-show match here and there, but they need to have two divas, two women's storylines going alongside each other. It's gonna be really hard to kick saying divas, I think, that, because they've always been called divas in WWE, yeah, like let's, always. Let's put a disclaimer: we're not saying divas to lower the, you know, the impact that these women have had. We've just been saying that for fucking years, mm-hmm. you know. Like, divas is just—it's been a thing. For since ever since they like branded you know the division, um, I think it I think Sable was the first diva because they actually kind of worked it into a storyline after she did Playboy. I want to be everybody's husband, Brock, Tyson. I want to be the Miz too. Besides the part he's gonna lose to Cesaro, we will get to that later. Um, but anyways. Um, it's going to be hard kicking that term. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, Sable was being called such a diva because she let the fame go to her head. That's what I was trying to get to. Um, anyways, they they do need more matches. I think they need a women's mid-card title. What do they call it? The women's mid-card title? I don't know. They, they come up with something. Make a tag team title. No, they don't have enough women for that. They have plenty of women. They have Emma, they have Naomi, Tamina, Natalia, Paige, Becky, uh, Sasha. That's seven fucking divas you can put together. They have Carmella in NXT, Dana Brooke in NXT. If you bring up, if you bring up women from NXT, then who you have in NXT anymore, though? You bring up Asuka, uh, Carmella, I have such and a crush on Asuka. Um, who else? Asuka, Carmella, Dana Brooke. Uh, Dana Brooke, Nia Jax. Let's say you bring just those four up. What do you have left in NXT? Blue Pants. She hasn't been seen since Brooklyn. Bring her back. Why haven't Why hasn't WWE signed her? She's She's over with the fans, but they don't want her. I think she got drunk after Brooklyn. Like they They did the event and then they went out partying. She got hammered and caused like a disturbance. I guess. I, I could be wrong. Uh, I, I heard something along those lines. Timing could be a bit wrong, but I don't care. All right. On to the next match, uh, the Intercontinental Championship match between Cesaro and Cesaro, The Miz. Cesaro, 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 
Well, I we. I was supposed to go first, but oh. you you went anyway. But it doesn't matter because I'm gonna pick the Miz anyway. Why? The okay, Cesaro has undeniable fucking charisma this time around. He's got that James Bond entrance. He's got. I don't know why. He just. I have a man crush on Cesaro. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? I just. I don't see them taking the title off the Miz. I don't. I not, do. Not. Not yet. Well, one, you can't give a guy a title reign that isn't... Okay, well, one, I I feel like he didn't get his rightful praise after he worked a... He, not a storyline, but he was he was really involved in AJ Styles and Chris Jericho's feud early on. He got a tooth knocked out. It was funny. Um, he didn't get the, He didn't get the proper respect he should have gotten. There was a few... I, I, I saw on the internet, I read a few dirt sheets and whatever... I was like, yeah, The Miz, is, he's so underrated, you know. And I was like, this guy's been a WWE World Champion. He's been Intercontinental Champion four times. Didn't win it. At the moment, he is underrated, though. Uh, he is underrated in, in a sense that he f- they feel like he's been pushed and he hasn't deserved it. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I mean. Like, he's he's had the, the titles. He he's a, he's a Grand Slam champion. He's had the world title. He's had tag titles, the U.S. title, the Intercontinental title. He's money in the bank. Never won a Rumble, uh, you know. But I, I think they're in the process of putting Miz back on the main event level. That's what I think they're doing because they finally got the Maurice element added to his, oh his character, God, which I think so makes his character so much better. Gorgeous. I the Maurice element adds so much more to his character um you know they, they've they've been booking him stronger and stronger lately and i think they're gonna have him go over versus cesaro to make him look even stronger and if he if he holds the intercontinental title for a long time and he's booked correctly they're gonna book him right back into the main event status i think cesaro should win the title because he has been shat on for too goddamn long he was in the middle of a big not a push, he was kind of being nudged at first. Because he got injured, he never got the chance to be pushed. Um, I actually, I heard a rumor that he was going to beat Kevin Steen for the title, for the Intercontinental title, and he was going to drop it at Mania to Neville. That's what I heard. It was a rumor, it was nothing but hearsay, could be wrong, but it would have been interesting to see that. Because one, Kevin Steen beat him at SummerSlam, and then nothing like happened after that. It kind of just fizzled down. It would have been cool to see that. And then they then they probably would have done the feud between Zayn and Steen at Mania. But whatever, it doesn't matter. It's happening now. Much to my disappointment. Just just wait for things. The build up is is fun, especially when you can just feel it coming. You just feel it coming. You know, if it, if you give it, it's like. Have you ever had sex? No comment. Okay, well, let's just say upon penetration, you just, you finish right there. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. The buildup is the fun part. Yeah, this is the kind of podcast this is, or whatever. Is it even a podcast since we have a visual now? It's still a podcast. It's just a video podcast. Okay, whatever. But nobody likes to finish upon one second you enter like it's got to be built up and organically fed in i didn't yeah that's phrasing but anyways um the the way you explain things sometimes i i got a reputation for that kind of thing but anyways cesaro has to win he they floundered his momentum so much john cena even gave the guy credit Cesaro should be main eventing every night. He should be. He should be. I guarantee you, if Daniel Bryan never got injured, he would have feuded with Cesaro for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Guarantee it. Because, one, those two guys were just perfect to go against each other. But The Miz, I feel like they could turn this into a bit of a long-term feud. Mm -hmm. That one promo where he was trying to quote Liam Neeson from Taken, that was so fucking bad, though. Cause he, I have liked the promos leading up to this, though. The pro, they, they've been fun to see in a kind of whole sense or whatever. But if you just 
if you like pick it apart, you can kind of see where it's bad because they were messing up on their lines. Or he was like, I know what you want. That's not how the fucking thing goes. Like, I know how that quote goes or whatever, but... Um, I did like the Cesaro remark. The only movie you belong in is Jackass. Mm-hmm. And I think a missed... Out- they should extend this feud if by God's, like, worst uh, worst way possible, Miz does win. I think it should extend to Extreme Rules and just have a brutal fucking completion match or whatever to the feud. And... In the meantime, remember when Cesaro was doing those five five different language things? Like he would cut his promos and I five or six or whatever, how many different languages he speaks? He could totally do that with Maurice. Because she speaks French a shitload now. Um, he could totally do that. And that would be yeah. fun to see. Well, the way I look at this match, The Miz needs it to continue to get over and book his character I strong. I feel like you're just and, sacrificing and, Cesaro. Then. No, no. Whether Cesaro wins this match or he loses this match, he's still going to be super over. He's still going to be in the main event scene. You can put him right into a number one contenders match for the World Heavyweight Championship the next night on Raw if he loses this match still. He's still going to be super over either way. Do you know what that says, though? It, it says wins and losses do not matter. Well, which I kind of agree with. However, you can't make a guy who loses a mid-card title match, you can't give him an opportunity to go and win the world title. Just like that. You can't, like, one night... AJ Styles lost to Jericho at Mania, and next night he's in the number one contenders match for the world title. Did he lose uh, the Intercontinental title? Did he lose the U.S. title? I'm not saying it was a title match, but he still lost his match at Mania. Yeah, and he got his redemption the next night. But uh, It's like saying, okay, disregard... Uh, Kevin Steen and Ambrose was in the match too, right? Um, No, it was Cesaro. Cesaro was in the match. Yeah, Cesaro. Okay, disregard those two. Um, What you could have done in a slightly better way, I'm not sure if this was very incredible. Um, Jericho comes out, cuts a heel promo. I deserve a title shot against Roman Reigns because I, I beat... AJ Styles, you know, the I beat the independence, you know, uh, guy, whatever. So, all of, all that's left for me to do is beat the WWE guy. I want the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. AJ Styles comes back and says, you got lucky. I can beat you tonight if you give me that chance. Shane comes up, books the number one contenders match. AJ wins. Disregard those other two guys. Like... With with Kevin Steen though, you could explain that he wasn't pinned. It was a ladder match. You could explain that it's it's simple, just like little differences, you know. But if a guy, especially if a guy gets pinned, clean, might I add, they shouldn't do that. However, you know, it's it's AJ. Like I, a part of me agrees, but then a part of me doesn't actually doesn't actually want him to be in the main event so soon, mm-hmm. because. I'll get to this after we finish with the, the predictions, but Cesaro, he has to win. He needs like a big feel-good moment. He's had he hasn't had a lot of those. He's lost. He's lost. Oh yeah, he's lost too. He gets a few, you know, pickup wins every now and then to keep his momentum strong because uh, if they keep him fucking losing, he's gonna turn into Ziggler, where people just don't care anymore because all they because they know he's always going to lose so and not to mention you know I love Cesaro I've seen him come so close and then get pushed so far away in the aftermath he deserves a fucking push so I think tonight you're gonna see the genesis of a Cesaro push just like that I think this is our biggest disagreement so far because I'm like firmly in like Miz camp and you're firmly in firmly in Cesaro camp. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see Cesaro win this match. Right. I love Cesaro, but I just think it's going to be the Miz. Right. I you know I I could see why you would want to see the Miz win. I could see how because let's just say 
he does he does a distract roll up finish or whatever which I feel is overdone but I if I feel okay I feel like at the end of this feud Cesaro has to walk away with the title okay I feel like Miz is purely a transitional champion um he's a good heel don't get me wrong but he should not be Intercontinental Champion. Um, he should lose it. To me. Like, not no, not to me, but to me, he should lose it. Just like that, you know. Alright, so... Uh, do you think they're going to have the championship match to end the show? Or, or Vince and Stephanie and Shane? I think they're going to come out... Probably at the end of the show, after the title match. Do you think they'll come out after the title match? So you want to do that prediction after the title match? Sure. All right. So the world title match, AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns. Um, you you were supposed to pick the Intercontinental Championship match first, right? No, you were. But I oh, I was. Okay, so... Cesaro, Cesaro, Cesaro. Well, so then this is technically yours to pick first. But I, I, I know who I'm picking. I think I know who you're going to pick too. But I've said that already. So... Roman Reigns. Yeah, Roman Reigns walking out the title. I don't see I any... I hate to say that. Yeah. I, I, it makes me honestly throw up in my mouth a little bit to say Roman Reigns is going to continue as Reigns champion. I'm not as anti-Reigns as everybody else, but I I'd, still, I'd still love to see Styles walk out with the title. I just don't see it happening. Uh, I don't see any way it's happening. I don't, I don't see this match ending without the Bullet Club... Well, not Bullet Club... <laughs> Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson somehow playing into the end of this. I don't think Balor's going to come out like everyone's been saying that there's a possibility of. I don't see that happening because he's already got his rematch for the NXT Championship in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I don't see him coming up to Raw until at least after that match. So. Uh, you know, like, just because his title... I mean, it's obvious he's going to lose his title match because... Uh, it's, he's got to come up to the main roster, Balor, Prince Devitt. Um, but I don't think just because these guys were in Bullet Club doesn't mean they should be in Bullet Club. Like it could be, because one the, the the glue that held the Bullet Club together was Carl Anderson. So as long as he's front and center in a group like that, I don't care who else is, because I mean like AJ was in it. And then he got kicked out by the current leader, Kenny Omega. Awesome. Um, and then Prince Devitt, Balor, um, he was the original leader. And then he was around for like a year and whatever. And then he left because he got signed. But I feel like but Carl Anderson, for two, two years, he was like the, like the, the top guy. You know, he wasn't the champion, but I feel like he was more of the leader than AJ was. Because it's technically, in Wikipedia, it says, like, Prince Devitt was the first leader, Carl Anderson was the second, AJ was the third leader. But they they led it at the same time. So... Wasn't Nakamura part of it, too? No. Nakamura was part of Chaos. Oh. Well, I don't watch New Japan. I'm sorry. I do. Um, no, I could... Do you have New Japan World? No. Oh. But, um... I had and I know like I watched Wrestle Wrestle Kingdom nine on pay per view, and I knew a guy who, <clears throat> um, like helped me see those. It's in Japanese, but you don't. I don't watch. Ever since Jr. left, I don't watch wrestling for commentary anymore. I watch it for the. Are wrestling. the promos in Japanese too? Yeah. The like they don't speak English in Japan. I mean, not in that way. They don't say, they don't cut English promos in Japan. Well, Styles even cut Japanese promos. No, 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 Styles cut English promos. That's that was their gimmick. They were so American, you know, because America's so star spangled, awesome. Japan sucks. Remember Pearl Harbor? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, that was their gimmick. They were overly American, which was interesting because you never see that. If it was the reverse, Japan would be the heel. Which I like that Nakamura hasn't been played as this Japanese foreign heel yet. Yet. There is still time. It's WWE. Um, but no, Nakamura was part of Chaos, who was the biggest heel group in New Japan. And then Bullet Club formed. 
and it kind of got them portrayed more in a sympathetic kind of way and before you know it they were the good guys mm-hmm. and I always kind of felt like Nakamura had a prickish charm to him like this guy was so charismatic you couldn't hate him and I was so fucking psyched for TakeOver Dallas because I was so happy that he was finally in the company because mm-hmm. um uh, one thing they do in the middle of summer is they do the G1 Climax and he did a match against Hiroshi Tanahashi, otherwise known as the Japanese John Cena. Title reign after title reign. However, Tanahashi has more longer title reigns, usually. Like, because they do a shitload longer title reigns. Guys can hold it here for two, three months. They hold it like eight or nine, mostly. Um, if they're lucky, I guess. Sometimes it's change things up but anyways the G1 Climax Nakamura was in the finals last year and he had a fucking breathtaking match with Tanahashi those guys you could see feud forever I feel like in Japan they can just they they bring so much guys out into the main event but and they could have them feud with like if you use just these guys like it's like a group of six or seven guys if you use just them your main event could be stacked for the next 10, 15 years. Because some of them are older, some of them are younger, some of them are just about 30. Because, you know, like, Nakamura is like 35, 36. Tanahashi's like going to be 40 this year. So, it's uh, really cool to see what Japanese wrestling does. It's not like, what? What? In the middle of your fucking promo, which I feel is so annoying. And then... Like they they watch the wrestling. It's like they're on the edge of their seat, and you know they're just. It's uh, it's really cool. They they, I heard they're trying to bring, like not New Japan World, but like an alternative kind of form of, not, like it's it's New Japan, but like you could see it on TV. You can get every event on pay per view. You could see some live events, because they they actually want to turn, some of their guys into the equivalent of The Rock because they just lost what? There's Devitt two years ago and then they lost Nakamura they lost Anderson Gallows Styles all on the same day all on the same day like did you hear about that? Mm-hmm. like imagine okay this is 1996 Wrestlemania happens four of your top talents just say we're going to WCW the day of mm-hmm. would you not be fucking scared? Mm-hmm. that would be petrifying but that that was when it happened that was the one day and i think it actually already happened i'm not sure i don't know if they i don't know if they gave their notices and then they did the pay-per-view and then it was leaked but it was um uh, it was cool to see all those guys debut but back to the main event i i feel like just to as a big fuck you to the fans Anderson and Gallows are going to align themselves with Reigns, and the Roman Empire is going to take form. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd like to see that. It would be. But, um... Because that's the only way they're going to get Roman Reigns over, if they align him with the cool guys. Mm-hmm. So, and... And turn Styles heel. Styles will never be a heel. He will be too over. He will be too... You can turn Styles heel before you can turn Anderson and Gallows heel, I think. I think they're already heel. When you attack the Usos, you're a heel. <laughs> Even though the Usos are stale as fucking bread. No, I, 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 if I was at an event, I'd boo the Usos. <laughs> the people aren't booing. They're going along with the Uso chants. They're not booing. The Usos are never booed. It's the, it's the Uso chants. That that promo that they cut on, on Raw with Reigns was just confusing to me because they kept calling him Uso. <laughs> That's like the, a family thing. Just I think it means cuz or whatever. Oh, well, I, them calling other people oos just is like, what? I don't really know. Um, I'm not a Roman Reigns mark. I don't like him. But, I mean, if they're trying to give him a credible title reign, then he ha- he has to go over. I don't think he should be like able to shit on everybody they put in his way Mm -hmm. so if you're gonna beat AJ fucking make it look interesting enough for me to 
tune in the next night and see, hey, how the hell is this going to pan out? So, but I swear to Christ, if Roman Reigns says that dumbass line, I'm not a good guy, I'm not a bad guy, I'm the guy, I'm going to fucking lose my shit. It's cool if you say it once or twice, here and there, don't say it every fucking promo. So, because then you're giving me more reason to hate you. And not in the term of I'm going to tune in just to just to wish you die and I get to see the, the thing happen. I'm going to not tune in at all because I know what's going to happen. He's going to say the same line. He's going to hit the same four moves. People are going to boo him. He's not. He's going to say, this is real life, baby, or whatever, I don't, whatever the fuck he said during his feud with Wyatt that was trying to make it a big deal. But anyways, that's my two cents on the matter. Alright, so now we both agreed that we we could get a bonus point for this. Um, I don't think we'll be able to do this for every pay-per-view because there won't always be something like this. But um, bonus point for payback. Um, Vince McMahon is going to announce if Stephanie uh, and Triple H or Shane McMahon are going to be running Raw. Um, so what do you think is going to happen in this segment? And it the only way we get a point for this is if we get it right. So... I think Shane is going to get the, the nod from Vince. Vince is going to have a, a change of heart. And there's going to be a hug. And it's like, I'm sorry for everything. I just want us to be a family. I'm not gonna, it may not go that way, but I know if I, I can smell a Vince a baby face turn. Because just hearing here comes the money just makes my heart tingle a little bit. Um, but... I like I like Shane because he he gets the business. And it's funny because I'm not saying Triple H doesn't get the business. I'm saying he's too in the mix to understand from a business point of view. He understands it from a wrestler's point of view. He was doing that 20 years before Vince said, "When are you going to stop fooling around and get a real job?" And I think Triple H needs to lose a retirement match book NXT and then take over the reins once Vince retires because then you know he's, he's going to stop doing wrestling focus on booking because imagine like you don't have to worry about appearing on TV you don't have to worry about prepping yourself for these matches you can book your passion project because NXT is his passion from what I hear at least and you know you could just make sure that the people that you need ready in two, three, four, five years, whatever, that they're ready. Because you can devote 100% of your time at work, not, you know, don't sacrifice your family at uh, for your job. So, like, you can make sure that these people are ready if you give them all the attention you need to. Because apart from... Well, actually, you know what? The only people I'm really rooting for in the... NXT days these era or no NXT era these days um they're all indies besides Bailey uh Nakamura Aries have you seen Aries I haven't really seen much of him lately uh I haven't watched NXT the last couple weeks I need to catch up yeah so I haven't I haven't, I haven't watched since Dallas so I I heard that Aries is going to feud with Nakamura, which would be fucking awesome. Eric Young and Bobby Roode mm -hmm. are in NXT now. Yeah, I heard about that. That's so great. I feel like Bobby Roode could be on the main roster because he's really getting up there in age. But then again, if you're competing every day and you, know, you're, you stay in shape, you could be good to go until like mid-40s maybe. However, that's, there's that argument, well, the older guys should put the younger guys over. It's like, no, it's not... They can do they can do the same thing when they're that age, you know. Like not everybody has to go over. But um there yeah, all the people I'm cheering for in the in the indies or no, in NXT these days are the indie folk that have come over. Besides I do like Dash and Dawson and Jordan Gable. Which I honestly like I feel like those guys, along with Enzo and Cass, 
and yeah, I'm actually really starting to like tag team wrestling again. Yeah, and the I never thought I would. Yeah, and the Vaude villains, and not to mention Gallows and Anderson. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, I heard the Mighty Don't Kneel are coming in, or, or torture, maim, destroy, and kill. If you go by another indie marks, because TMDK, yeah, TMDK, they're from Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan. They got signed. I think they're due for developmental and. I don't know. It could be any day now. It could be in a few months. They're coming in, too. And I'm forever holding on to hope that the Briscoes are coming to WWE from Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Jay and Mark. Because those guys, they got more charisma in their pinky than Roman Reigns does in his entire fucking body. It's like they can just capture a crowd with their, just, their promos, their moves. It's like... But, yeah... So what was the question again? Well, you said Shane would be getting raw. Shane would be not raw. The WWE as a whole, like. Well, yeah, but it, the stipulation is who gets raw. Yeah. But it, it, if you get raw, you get the, you you're running everything. I guess. But um. And at the end of the day, I think Shane should be in charge. But I I, I smell a, a feud between him and Triple H. If he does get the the reins, actually, it, it could go either way, but I, I think a feud is going to happen because of that. So, what I think is going to happen is I you said you're gonna you see a babyface turn from Vince. Yeah. I see, I see kind of a babyface turn, but not a full babyface turn. Mm-hmm. I think he's gonna come out and then because I don't think it's gonna be as cut and dry as is uh, Shane, you're running raw, um, or Stephanie, you're running raw. I think he's gonna come out. And yeah. say that the authority is going to be running Raw, but Shane is going to run SmackDown, and we're going to get a brand split. No, I was just going to ask that. No. no. And then we're going to get a draft on Raw. No. no. Brand split is the wrong idea. Because one, it just is, okay? There is so much wasted opportunity if, you know, especially if you do a draft lottery every year. It just it's gonna be the same thing over and over again. I do feel like the brand split worked at first, but if you uh, unless you have separate pay per views, there's no reason to do a brand split because then you can feature so more title matches on TV. But I just I don't like the idea of a brand split. Well, I I I I like the idea of it because it's gonna get more TV time for more guys because then you'll you'll have watch, guys that you only see on Raw only see on Smackdown and watch Damien Sandow still doesn't get any TV time but um I think they're gonna see this as a way um to get people to watch Smackdown again because nobody watches Smackdown if you have guys if you have a, a Raw roster and a Smackdown roster that gives people a, a reason to watch Smackdown because you're not gonna see those guys on Raw give give me the book I guarantee you I could turn Smackdown into a watchable program without the brand split. Yeah, you you can, but this is just their easy way of doing. It. This is going to be their easy way of doing it, I think. The easy- and the biggest problem with SmackDown right now is a half hour of it is replays of Raw. Right. The, the the easy way is not the best way to go to. Okay, because if it was easy, everyone could do it. You know, because uh, if it was easy, you know, then. Well, TNA would be a thriving business. If it was easy, WCW would have never died. Or ECW would have never died. Or the NWA would still be a relevant thing. But it's tricky. The wrestling business is a tricky fucking thing. Instead of going the easy route, Vince, you know, Vince monopolized the business. Okay? The, the, there's When I told people I watched TNA six years ago, you know, when Hogan first came on, People laughed at me. My other wrestling friends laughed at me. Um, and my, br- my brother especially, because he hated TNA. Um, he said it was the one thing that was different from WWE, and then they brought in fucking WWE guys to just shit on everybody else. Because they brought in Kurt Angle. They brought in Scott Steiner. St- uh, not Sting. Uh, who the fuck else did they bring in? Christian. Except he didn't really shit on everybody, but nonetheless, it, it turned into a WWE wannabe. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, like back to the point, um, I feel just like going the hard way is a smart move for them. Like book your fucking TV correctly without a brand split. It's the easy route and it's probably going to work for you. However, if you can just learn to run your fucking wrestling company like a wrestling company and not like a fucking sports conglomerate, which Vince so desperately wants it to be, it's not going to be that way, Vince. Um, you're going to have bad news on your hands because he's lost a shitload of money. Okay, this is going to sound stupid. I think the network was a bad idea on their part. It's a great one for us. It's a bargain. It's ten bucks a month. Um, I agree with you. I know where you're going with this. Right. But however, it screws out a lot of people when it comes to money that they should be getting. Uh, CM Punk left. That was one of the many reasons he left because he didn't know what his paydays were going to be now, because it goes from sixty, fifty, forty. I think WrestleMania is like sixty. The others are fifty or some are forty, whatever. Um, you know, like, but in my opinion, WrestleMania should not have been free. That's what I did. That I uh, I signed on to get. Well, actually, I I didn't really care about Mania up until a day before. However, um, I I signed up purely to get Dallas, take over Dallas because I was not missing Nakamura's debut. But um, you know, like. Uh, they lost a lot of money because of the network. They lost a lot of money because they've been so... They've been... You know, the fans have become disillusioned with the product. And I think I've said this before on a podcast. Um, when you try to cater to a bunch of kids... And speaking of which, Kevin Nash actually said something on this point. Um, like, it's it's hard for people to identify... When a grown ass man says, I'm going to kick your butt. And in fourth grade, there's people who say, Yo, you know, I'm going to fuck your mother or whatever. And um, that's something I heard. Because, like, you, you play Call of Duty online. Don't you hear that shit? Mm -hmm. Like, you hear people say, call, like, call you a, a faggot or whatever. Or a nigger, but. I think it's gotten less bad the last couple of releases just because for some reason it seems like people have less less people have mics yeah that's true but um it th when people do have mics it's still there mm -hmm. so and well that's you know, and another thing too is you know I, th I, I think people hate call of duty now more people hate call of duty because it's the same fucking shit every year i think black ops 3 may have resurrected it but this is this here here nor there this isn't a call of duty podcast right, 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 right. but anyways when you try to cater to an audience but you don't know what your audience is even bad news for you mm -hmm. um what i think wwe doesn't need to go back to the blood and the gore and the tits and the ass and all that shit. It just needs to be realistic. Mm -hmm. It needs... If you're going to have a blood feud, there, sh there should be blood in wrestling. You mean to tell me that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens... Um, I just... I hate that. I just hate saying that. Um, the, the hatred that those two have for each other, not one time are they ever going to bleed on TV. No, no, it's a, it's a rule. You can't that, bleed. That... The... Um... Balor Samoa Joe match at that was a Dallas. Fucking cool match. Yeah, but it pissed me off that the ref just kept getting in Samoa Joe's face. You could tell he was getting pissed off at the at the ref. I heard, yeah, I heard Stephanie McMahon was pissed off too, because the excessive amount of blood. Like, oh yeah, you can really blame a guy for how much he bleeds, and she was more pissed off at the fact because she was in the audience. Um, Shane's kids were there, with her and Linda. And they were saying, fuck PG, fuck PG, fuck PG. And if, I think someone had a camera on, like not a, not one of the cameramen, like someone had a cell phone camera on Stephanie. And as her, as her nephews are saying, fuck PG, Linda has a smirk on her face. Um, but Stephanie is like looking around like, no, no, PG's good, PG's good. No, shut up, shut up, shut up, whatever. Um, like, you can't just do PG, like, because it takes the organic feel of it away. 
you know, but, but I don't know. It's it's gotta change, man. But like, if you ask me, I think Shane running it because he doesn't think WWE should be PG. And I feel like if you're a McMahon, you're not gonna be just on air talent. Shane's gonna have some say in storylines and shit and whatever. So that's gonna make the shows even better. So no brand split, no nothing. Have him run everything equal. Have him make a you know a few surprise appearances on SmackDown or whatever you know, whatever. So you get a bonus point if Shane. Shane's running things, and I get a bonus point if there's a brand split. I don't I don't think it necessarily has to be the Authority running Raw and Shane running SmackDown. It could be flipped. Just if right. there's a brand split, I get a point. Right. right? Okay. All right. Stay tuned, you guys. A couple days from now, we'll have our review. Um, I'll have the championship presented to me. And then Bryce is going to have three chops oh. across his chest. So look forward to that. Um, you got any I can final, I can final take, thoughts? I could take a few chops. I don't care. Um, if okay, You know what? The one thing that is making me actually believe your brand split idea... And it's making me kind of scared. Um, it's the beginning of a new era, is what the tagline for uh-huh. Payback is. So that's it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. So until then, stay tuned. You're going to see me rocking a big ass cardboard belt. So with it, with my name on it, that white strip on that white strip, that's my name going to be on it. Nah, it's going to be my name. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Again, stay tuned. See you in the review.